sun and CO2 to make glucose, the sugar that they use for food. They also put oxygen into the air so we can share because oxygen is everywhere. Welcome back. In the last video, we talked about distribution and abundance. And in this video, we're actually going to talk about how we can measure distribution and abundance. I'll read the actual top point. It says, students will process and analyze information f obtained from a variety of sampling studies to justify the use of different sampling techniques to make population estimates when total counts, counts cannot be performed. So this says, the verb itself says justify. So we need to say, why do we need to have different sampling techniques? to be able to estimate, so guess how many of a certain population there are in a given area. So before we start again, that word population pops up, and I want to go over what that word population is before we start, and generally how distribution is usually in a normal scenario. So first, what is population? So if, for example, you imagine this pond, and this pond might be in somewhere in Australia, and we find frogs, here, so frogs, snakes, and inside here you have your fish. And these are all really close by. And these frogs happen to be the same species of frogs. So these are the same species of frogs. All these frogs are not only very similar in terms of features, but they can also they're so similar that they can actually breed and have fertile offspring. That's the definition of, of a species. So these are frogs are the same species. And what the population is, is how many members of a species there are. So how many? So all we have to do to find out how many members of of the frog population there are, one, two, three, four, there's four frogs. There would be two snakes and three fish. But what is a community? Well, community is all the living things you can find there. So this community is, we've got frogs there, we have snakes there, and we have fish. That's our community in this given environment. So population, which is how many we can find, of a certain species, so for example, four frogs, the same species of frogs, two of that same species of snake, and three of that same species of fish. Community, which is all living things. What kind of living things are there? So we can find frogs there, snakes there, and fish there. So those two are quite important in the world, the word population and community, and the word population popped up in your actual sub-stop point. Now, also I want to talk about how can we usually, how, what dis kind of distribution do we usually find when we look for living things? Is it scenario A, B, or C? Now, I'll, I'll go for these. So this would be very ordered here, the sample A, or scenario A, which means, for example, we find one frog here, and then five meters apart, we find the next frog, and five meters apart, we find the next frog again, and five meters apart, we find the next one, and it's all very ordered. This is not the most common way. We don't usually find this that it's so ordered. There's usually more of a, a pattern. This kind of pattern is unusual. The other one is, so scenario B is, is random distribution. So you can imagine we've just got frogs anywhere. So we don't really can't guess where they are. They're just at random places. And again, this is also not usual. So scenario two with a random distribution is also not normal because we usually find it like this. This is a clustered distribution. What that means is we can usually find members of the species in one area. So for example, here we're all, they're all clustered together. And the reason why is like, for example, a frog. You can imagine this might be, we might have a river which goes around these areas and you're not gonna find them randomly distributed, but you're gonna find them in clusters because they're gonna be close to the river. So usually we find things in a clustered sort of distribution because they have to be close to resources, their food, their shelter, their space that they need for survival. So that's the kind of distribution we find most of the time. But what we're going to do in this dot point is actually going to cover some of the techniques we can use to actually count distribution and abundance. So it says justify the use of different sampling techniques. I'm going to quickly go over first the different sampling techniques and I'm going to justify why we need to have different ones. So first, I'm going to talk about something called a transect. And what a transect actually is, is you can imagine you're just going to take a ruler, or not a ruler, but just a meter tape, and take, make a long line. So this is here. We've got the, you imagine the ocean is here. We've got a beach here, our grassland behind our beach, and behind that grassland, we've got a forest. So you would just go and you take your, your meter measurements, make a line, whatever, like a tape line, a, a, whatever you want to do, and you make one long line across the whole place. 
as you transect. What you're going to do next is you're going to see here. So you can imagine the same line. It's that line here. And again, what transect is, is this. It's like it's a meter tape or any string you want to grab. And you can measure out an area. And all you're going to do is you're going to find what exactly did they find here. What did they find in terms of plants or animals along that string? So what you can imagine, okay, we found some, when it comes to this one here, the example we gave, right, you found some algae in the ocean. We found only sand when it comes to the beach. We maybe found a bit of grass and maybe one flower in that grassy area. And we found lots of trees and shrubs in the forest. So this was to measure distribution, right? So what we can find, not how many usually, but what we can find. So, okay, we said we can find algae in the ocean and we can find trees and shrubs in the forest. So we use transect, which is just a long line that we do make to me measure distribution. Now, it's not that good to measure abundance usually because it's just one line, one line itself. It's not covering any area. So what we do to measure abundance is something called a quadrant. A quadrant is this. So what you're going to go the same scenario. What you're going to do now is first you might measure out the area of this area, so this grassland here. And you're going to say, okay, you've measured the area, so you've gone from both sides. And you say this is here is 100 square kilometers. And what you're going to do next is you're going to grab a small area, it's like a small triangle, a rectangle, and you're going to place it at any of those, these locations. And you know exactly how big that is. Let's say that's one square meter. So it's one hundredth of the whole area, one square meters. So you can imagine this here to be this thing that I've drawn here. And because this is not just a string, but an actual area, you, what you're going to do now is you're going to find how much grass can you find in that one area that you're actually looking at. So you're going to count the actual grass bits. One, two, three, four, five, six. Right, so in that one square meter, we found six six grass shrubs. And now what you can do, because this is one meter, one square meter, and this whole area is 100 square meters, you can just estimate and say, okay, if this, if we can find six in one meter, we would find 600 in the whole area. So we use quadrants to be able to measure a whole area without actually counting every single blade of grass, because that would count, that would take a long time. Right, so quadrants are just these different rectangles. We drop them and we see what's inside. And then we guess, okay, we've, we know the area of the actual quadrant. We know the area of the area that we measured. And if it's, you know, one hundredth of the whole area, we just times it by 100 to guess the total number of the abundance. So this is used to measure the abundance. And this is an example of someone who's actually using this quadrant. So just again, it puts in an area, counts how many, in this case, grass blades they can find. Now the next was the capture, mark, and recapture. So capture, mark, recapture, what we do first is we capture, so this is supposed to be separate. We capture five, six birds, right? So this is, we capture six birds and we all give them a mark. So we mark them after we've captured them. So we've captured six birds, this is step one. And then what we do is release them again. We release, so we've captured, we've marked, and then we release, and then we recapture. Second step is we recapture six birds again and see how many of them have the actual marks. So in this case, one, two, three, four, four have no marks, but this one here and this one here have marks. So two are marked out of our four. So we have six marks originally, but when we recapture them, only two of them have marks. And that means that overall, the ones we've marked make up one third, so two sixths or one third of our whole population are the marked ones. So we can then estimate if we actually times that number by three. So if that number two, so the two marked represents six, but they're only a one third of our captured ones. If we times that number by three, we will get our estimate for how many birds are on the, in the total population. So this is the actual formula. So you should remember this formula here. Number of captured times number of recaptured divided by marked in recapture. So number of captured would be six. So six times six because we've recaptured six as well. And then how many were marked? Well, two were marked. So divided by two. And six times six is 36 divided by two 
is 18. So we estimate that there's 18 birds make up this population of birds in a given area. And that's what we can use to get abundance as well. So we've got time for distribution and time for abundance. And but now it says justify why we need different ones. So why do we need more than just one different type? Well, with this one here, we can get distribution. We can find out what kind of things are in the area and what kind of things grow in grassland, what kind of things grow in forests and in the beach. But they're not good for abundance. They're not good for abundance because we don't, even though we know how many, what there are, we don't you know exactly how many there will be in a given area because if we just have one string as opposed to an area that we're measuring and we're looking at. So it's not good for abundance. And it's definitely not good for the abundance of, or the distribution, it's also bad for the distribution of animals. If you think about a fox, if you put a string there, then we're not going to be able to measure the abundance or the distribution of a fox because they're not going to stay at the string. They're just going to walk away and run away. So this is only used to, to measure the distribution of plants mostly, or very slow moving animals like snails or something. But anything that can move away will move away, so it's not going to be useful for that. And the other one, the quadrants, this was useful for abundance. It wasn't really necessarily very useful for distribution because we're only looking at a very small area, but it's good for abundance. So we can estimate how much of a plant there is. But is it going to be good for estimating the abundance of animals? Again, if you're looking at a fox or a bird, if you put a square there in the actual grass, it's not going to stay there. It's just going to leave. So we can measure the abundance of plants and maybe snails, but we can't use, measure the abundance of animals. So for animals, it's still pretty bad. That's why we need to have this capture, mark, and recapture, because that allows us to get the abundance of animals. Because here we can tag them, we can capture somehow, tag them, and figure out what the population, estimated population for them, doing it that way. So we use capture, mark, recapture, not for plants, but just for animals, to get the abundance. So it says, justify the use of different sample techniques. This what you said was justification. We need these different sample techniques to be able to get the abundance and distribution of plants and animals. Because if we only use one, that wouldn't be good enough to get the abundance and distribution of both plants and animals. We need to use a variety of different ones to get the, both of those factors down. But I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.